YouTube, Joby from Oz here. So I'm starting to get a bit of a reputation for doing some weird and wacky stuff. And this one's not going to be any different. I have a DeWalt radio arm saw, which has a three-phase motor on it. And I've got this second hand. The motor spins freely. And it's a bit of a beast of a saw. It's a three horsepower, three phase motor. Unfortunately, when I went to wire it up, plug it in, some years after I bought it, I discovered that she not working. And I started to read a little bit about how to make them work and what they do and how they what they do and how they work. And the first thing, of course, is to check the information. And on the coils, I'm starting to be able to see some UVW markings in here. Z. A bit of a clean up's going to help. Um, but I tested the coils and it wasn't giving me some useful information. I'm expecting there to be uh, values in the region of uh, kilo ohms or balanced anyway across coils um, but I'm not getting that so the suggestion at this point is to rewind the motor. Now this particular motor three phase it's probably going to be at about a 400 500 dollar rewind and i don't have that much in the saw so realistically speaking it's not economical for me to repair it which leads me to the point of saying well this is a fun experiment maybe i can rewind it myself and learn something make a video of the process so that's what we're going to do we're going to document my attempt to rewind this three-phase motor. I'll bring it back once I've got the motor off and then we'll see if I can get some readings that are a bit more useful. So first things first, we've managed to release the saw blade. makes the whole thing a whole lot less scary looking. That includes a seal on this end of the motor. We've got a hitch point cap, a split grab here and we've got a cover over this. So I'm going to pull those covers off. Can't release that a bit further. So this pair of screws here looks to be an adjustment to bring the motor into vertical so that the protractor on the end of the motor reads correctly. So one thing we know about 12 millimeters is 12 millimeters is 8 plus 4. Appropriate placement of an 8 mil and 3 4 mil, we may just be able to get it open. So an M10 and a couple of 2 millimeters, we're able to loosen off this M12 hex from one side. A 
imagining this as a, a bushing, then the motor should come out. Do the same on the other side. Taking this clamp bolt here out. We've got the spring clamp here, we've got that, we've got an oiler here. That yoke is a casting, so that's not going to come out. The only thing I can think is the motor itself sliding forward. On that location somehow. Possibly this is a collar. There's a thread there, there's a solid shaft there. This and this, are they attached? I'll pull this pin out next. that that motor is somehow that looks like a single piece that is a solid casting there's no way that's coming apart dropping down there. All right, I'm going to clear the tools from under, give it a gentle tap with a metric persuader. access into the motor and the windings. We still haven't figured out how to separate this. Not clear yet whether it's a press or quite what we need. Anyway, progress. A bit more low tech than I was expecting inside here. We've got some coil windings, 255, 40, 50, as noted here. There's an inner lip there. I reckon that's just pushed in or pressed in or something. Because there's no access from this side. So. Yeah. I'm gonna see if we can't just pull it out. Well that speaks volumes. These windings are absolutely shot. So maybe the coil itself isn't actually the problem. Maybe it's just shorted at these leads. That'd be a nice win, wouldn't it? See if I can bring it back into here, find some good wire, check the winding resistance here. And if that's all good, we're happy and gravy. 
Oh, I'm excited. Red, yellow, green. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So I'm picking. That's a really good ans answer as to why this is fucked. Now, to see if we can get into here and rewire back to good wiring. Angle homemade spudger. So my goal here is to spudge my way into this connection. Hopefully a connection in there. And then maybe there's a connection in here because that wiring's fucked. The problem now is this head is all lacquered together. It's quite tight and difficult to move. If I attempt to put any lacquer thinners on there, it's likely to attack the lacquer of the windings as well as the lacquer binding the windings together. So I'm really not sure quite where to go. This is showing to me that the windings at this point, even though the wiring here is pretty badly degraded, I'm getting about three ohms per phase. So it's balanced, there's no shorts, so the problem was definitely up in here, but it extends through to this pigtail winding here. So, where do I go from here? Anybody got any good ideas for how to release that? I've tried using like a nylon spudger so I don't damage the coil windings. I'm slowly getting progress, so maybe it's just going to be a battle of inches, millimetres, microns, something. Um, I can see there's a junction up here. It's probably the first of three. <sighs> it's just close. It's close. I started on this side, I'm trying to just peel individual wires out. And again, that's a job. Rewinding it doesn't look like that much of a job. If I go that far, I think these tags here must be wedges. Could be the case. Could just lift up. Try that next to see if I can pull the cage out. So I'm pretty close now that I could just say fuck it. And um, if I can get this out, then I can be playing with this inside. Okay, let's see if I can get these tabs up. So that's the bushing. With some spaces, which held one side of the motor. And then once that was clear, I was able to get the other side of the motor to drop out. That spaces the motor not far off. So, if you're having problems, that's the answer. Now I have this little baby I can do a bit more with. Um, 